This Univox High Flyer bass pickup came in for a rewind. I've never done one of these before, and at the time, I knew nothing about them. My first goal was to get the cover off. It's a plastic cover, and I couldn't see any adhesive residue anywhere, so I started by flipping the pickup over and pressing up on one side at a time. Fortunately, the cover came off easily with a little bit of effort. The compression fit of the cover is actually very impressive, and I was surprised that there was no adhesive or anything else holding the cover in place. Upon removal, you can see a plastic bobbin with four pull pieces in the middle and two lead wires coming off the bobbin. The bobbin is extremely full, with a ton of wire packed onto a very small surface area. The bobbin itself is extremely flimsy, and it looks like it warped from the mere tension of the coil wire. On the back of the pickup, you can see a ground wire and a hot wire. The ground wire is soldered directly to the right leg of the base plate, and the hot wire is soldered to an insulated eyelet mounted in the base plate. Presumably, the start and finish leads from the coil were tied and soldered to the respective lead wires, but they're nowhere to be found. It's a risky design, and it's no wonder the pickup isn't working. The delicate magnet wire coming off the coil needs a lot more reinforcement and stability to bulletproof it. But first things first. I need to get the bobbin off to get a better look at it. A small screwdriver will act as a wedge, and the bobbin can be pried up gradually at either end. I have no idea what kind of adhesive is holding it on, but it is not pretty. The adhesive took a good piece of the coil wire with it, but it doesn't matter since I'm going to be tearing this coil down and rewinding it from scratch the right way as usual. To do that, however, I need at least some information to go by. Fortunately, the owner was able to get a reading on the neck pickup, which was right around 10.25k. Knowing the DC resistance of one of the pickups is a huge help and one major piece of a two-piece puzzle. The other piece is the wire gauge, which can be measured with a micrometer. I carefully thread the wire between the micrometer jaws and close it. I'm getting a reading of 0.00215 inches, or 0.055 millimeters. I just happen to have a spool of 44 gauge wire with a diameter listed in millimeters on the bobbin, and it's right at 0.05 millimeters. Much to my surprise, it would appear this Univox High Flyer single coil base pickup was actually wound with 44 gauge magnet wire. That's incredibly rare, at least on pickups I've tested. The thinnest wire you're going to see on most pickups is 43 gauge wire, unless you're crazy enough to build pickups with 48 gauge wire like I do. Tearing the coil down with a small pair of diagonal cutters and an X-Acto knife with a number 11 blade, I notice something else interesting. The wire is completely unpotted. There isn't a trace of wax anywhere on the outside or inside of the coil. It's safe to assume the neck pickup is also unpotted, so now I know that this pickup is not going into the wax bath. With the plastic cover, plastic bobbin, and metal base plate that holds the bar magnets and pole pieces all separated, I can now prepare for winding. This bobbin, however, is going to require an additional step. I noted earlier that it's already been deformed by the coil, and squeezing it with my fingers, I can see that it's even more flimsy than I thought. My main concern here is that the coil wire will compress the bobbin, which will make it too tight to fit over the pole pieces. To circumvent that problem, I stacked and cut a few popsicle sticks and fit them snugly inside of the bobbin. They're just thick enough that they hardly expand the bobbin at all, but should completely resist any deformation of the bobbin during winding. Once the coil is completely wound, it should hold its shape on its own, and I should be able to remove the popsicle sticks with no issues and fit the bobbin over the pole pieces perfectly. Using a blank bobbin plate I made recently out of half-inch plywood, a 2-inch diameter, 3 quarter 16 TPI steel face plate, a few wood screws, flat black enamel, reflective tape, and marked a center line on with a circle center finder, I first draw a center line on the bobbin itself with an ultra fine tip sharpie marker, then line up the center line with the center of the bobbin plate. Masking tape on either side of the bobbin acts as a spacer, so after I double stick tape the back of the bobbin, I'll know exactly where to stick it down so it's centered vertically and horizontally on the bobbin plate. Now, as for the winding itself, I'll wrap some magnet wire around the bobbin a few times, then tape the wire down on top of the bobbin plate so it's out of the way. That's going to be our start wire. And with the start wire secured, I can finally start winding. I'm going to wind to 6,500 turns and then check the DC resistance. To test a pickup in between winding, you need to strip the insulation on the start wire as well as the finish wire. With single poly nylon coated wire, which is what I'm using, all you need to do is get the wire taut, then carefully run a tin soldering iron along a short length of it. 
Then put one probe of the multimeter on the stripped finish wire and one probe on the stripped start wire. Setting my multimeter to 20k ohms, I can see that at 6,500 turns of 44 gauge wire, I'm at 8.27k. I'll test again at 7,300 turns and find that it's at 9.31k, and I'll test again at 8,000 turns to see that it's at 10.25k. 10.25k is the DCR of the neck pickup in this set, and since I always overwind the bridge pickup just a little bit, I'm going to go to 8,500 turns for a final DC resistance of 11.17k. The bridge pickup is a naturally quieter position as the strings don't vibrate in as wide of an arc. That means they don't disturb the magnetic field as much as they do in the neck position, which means less electrical current induced in the coil, which means you need to set the pull pieces closer to the strings to compensate for the loss of output. It also naturally has much more treble for the same reason that picking the strings closer and closer to the saddles creates a more and more pure treble tone. Extra windings on the coil of the pickup attenuate this treble response to a small or great degree depending on how much you overwind it. In this case, it's an extremely modest overwind and should make for a great sounding, more balanced pickup without deviating too far from the original design. With the winding out of the way, it's time to attach the 28 gauge hookup wires, also known as the pigtails. This part is extremely critical as if a pickup like this is going to fail, it's most likely going to be here. I put a layer of black cloth electrical tape over the coil, then strip the 28 gauge hookup wire and tie the magnet wire around it at least 5 times. Then I load a little flux onto the hookup wire with the tied magnet wire and tin them with a tin soldering iron. The solder will permanently fuse the magnet wire and hookup wire together. Then I lay that wire down on top of the black cloth electrical tape and super glue that wire in place by applying super glue and super glue accelerator right on top of that tape while holding the wire in place with a Teflon dowel, a waxed popsicle stick, or anything that'll resist bonding to the super glue. I'll then add another layer of tape over the top of that. DiMarzio would actually super glue over this layer of tape as well for extra protection, which isn't a bad idea. Repeat the process on the other side and wrap the entire coil with Captain or black cloth tape and you'll have a completed coil ready to wire to the rest of the housing. The wound bobbin slips easily but snugly over the pole pieces as expected. And as a stroke of especially good luck, the bobbin has two holes in it for the hookup wires to travel through. I'll fish the pigtails through the holes and tuck any excess along the base plate and then move on to the next step. Soldering the 22 gauge hookup wire leads to the pigtails. However, I'm going to take it one step further and not only color code the start and finish leads, but add a third separate ground wire for the base plate. Instead of the original two red wires for the start and finish leads, I'm going to wire it with red and blue for the start and finish leads and black for the base plate ground. And that's for one major reason, to allow the pickup's phase to be switched. If at some point I make a video elaborating on in-phase and out-of-phase pickup combinations, I'll put a link in the description box. So be sure to check the description box in case I ever get around to that. In the meantime, here's the Cliff Notes version. The owner might need to swap the soldering positions of the leads on this bridge pickup in order to get it in-phase with the neck pickup when using them together. But the factory wiring on this pickup has one of the leads soldered directly to the base plate. That can cause issues when swapping the soldering positions of the two leads, such as excessive humming and buzzing, and even a complete loss of output. The simple foolproof solution is to add a separate ground wire for the base plate. There are absolutely nothing but benefits by doing this. By using an independent ground wire for the base plate, the two lead wires from the coil can be swapped freely without worry or consequence. It's the same technique I use when making Telecaster pickups, and you'll notice on 4 conductor wire for humbuckers, there's actually 5 wires. The 4 conductor wires are start and finish for each of the two coils, and the 5th bare wire is an independent base plate ground wire. Anyway, back to actually finishing up this pickup rewind. Once I've completed the tedious task of hooking up the lead wires and tucking them away, and trust me, it's much more difficult and time consuming than it looks, I super glued the bobbin to the base plate for good measure, then replaced the plastic cover, which was a lot more difficult to fit back onto the pickup than I expected. But eventually I got it to fit perfectly. The build on this pickup is now beyond rock solid, and I can guarantee that it won't fail again in the future. As an added bonus, I threw it on my LCR meter and oscilloscope, as usual, to log the data in my ever-growing pickup spreadsheet. The final reading is 73 picofarads capacitance, 
11.3K resistance, 5.1 Henry's inductance, and a resonant peak of 1.6 decibels at 2.9 kilohertz. I'm unsure of the magnet type, but the magnetic strength on top of the pole pieces was around 600 to 750 gauss. To see exactly how I took these measurements in great detail, check the description box for a link to my video tutorial on testing pickups. I'll write down the turn count and wire gauge to wrap everything up. 8,500 turns with 44 gauge magnet wire. SPN stands for single build polynylon, which is the insulation type of the wire. The customer ended up very happy with the pickup, said it sounded great and balanced perfectly with the neck pickup, which of course I was thrilled to hear. And he even sent me a tip, which I very much appreciated, and took that as an additional sign of how successful the rewind was. It just goes to show that a little detective work can go a very long way. So stay tuned to join me in unraveling more guitar mysteries in the near future, right here on GuitarMD.